All right, let's talk about Jared Goff's weird day, a very weird day in Detroit. You got a victory, so you feel good about that. He also threw three interceptions and probably could have been a fourth. Let's talk about those four plays, and then let's talk about how this comeback happened at the end. So, you know, because some of these ugly, some of these interceptions looked really ugly, but what, I think when you actually go back and watch the film and look at the X's and O's, they, they're more understandable, even if they are still not great, like, this first one, for example, I would just straight up say I wouldn't put on him at all. So I'm highlighting a safety here for Chicago. It's lined up as though it's going to be quarters coverage, but it's not. That's where he's going. He's going to cover that area of the field. And this is the entire concept. It's going to be uh, cover three zone, and you have a tight end who's running a route that still could get into a uh, gap in coverage against cover three zone. It's a little better against quarters coverage, but either way, this route on paper can work. So, okay. Goff's going to look in that direction. However, right when this play begins, you see that right here, uh, a couple things to note. So, you know, the route does appear to be getting ready to get open. However, the defender that I talked about, he's moving over essentially in the way of the tight end that Goff wants to throw to. There is a player underneath that he's looking towards. So this isn't uh, pass interference or anything. It's not an illegal play because he's not intentionally trying to, you know, run into somebody. And you do have a, you know, a right to be there just like your opponent has a right to be there, right? As you see, there's a collision. Goff's throw would have been on the money, but because of the collision, it goes past and gets intercepted instead. While that looks bad, I actually would not say that that was a bad play whatsoever. I would say it was a completely fine play. Certainly unlucky, certainly unfortunate, but that's kind of all I would view that. The other ones were bad, but let's explain them. Starting off with this one, what happened here? It's zone coverage, so cover three zone. That's what the Bears are doing. Play a lot of zone coverage, Chicago does. So let's see what happens here. Goff is going to take the snap. He looks over the middle, and so he sees that Chicago player, that linebacker, uh, and he's going to assume that linebacker is going to run out to the flat. There's a, you know, Lions player in that yellow circle. You would assume that they just kind of pair up there, right? Well, watch how instead the corner comes in and covers underneath. So for Chicago, now he is open. He is free. But now Goff has looked away from that. He was looking there. He's not looking there anymore. So he's assuming that that player just added a play at this point when that's not what's happening. On the other side of the field, those two Lions players are running two different levels down the field. One more underneath, one further deep. The idea is that, you know, hopefully, if the concept on the right side of the screen took all the Chicago players away, there's only one more Chicago player who can make a play. You have two receivers in the area. You throw to whichever one is open. And since that linebacker is moving in to cover more underneath, now Goff is thinking, okay, cool, perfect, let's throw it further down the field, because what he thinks is happening is it's open. Instead, when Goff finally throws it over the middle, it gets intercepted. There also were offensive linemen just affecting Goff's line of sight, so I think that's part of what affected this play, uh, and as the whole ends up getting intercepted on that play. So while still something you would like to see Goff notice and read, again, that's how it happened. That's what went wrong there for Goff. Still a mistake, but that's what happened. The third interception and what really felt like the dagger, I thought, at the time was this one where it's going to be zone coverage. Uh, and again, the concept on paper can work. You have two. It's similar to that last one I showed you, right? Two players running kind of two different layers down the field, one more underneath, one further down the field. Hopefully, no one else picks this up and you get an open player. Watch as you're going to see Goff take the snap and you're going to see that right here. So, Really, I don't know exactly why he's doing this. Tremaine Edmonds, that's the linebacker there. He's playing this one well, where you could try to make the throw to the player I've circled in yellow, but it's not really open, right? He can run in and make a play. But the guy further down the field also isn't open because Tremaine Edmonds is in that passing lane. Instead, Goff tries to throw it anyway because I guess it worked on paper, so just throws it there anyway. And this has been kind of the criticism of Jared Goff over the years has been, you know, he tends to... Throw it to where plays would work on paper. He's actually very good at his pre-snap reads, but, you know, that's how Bill Belichick kind of got the better of him in the Super Bowl, famously, right? Was, you know, ran a lot of concepts that things would change pre-snap and post-snap, and Goff would go to where he thought he should throw the football pre-snap, and that would result in some incompletions and he and even interceptions. And here, this is resulting in an interception. Uh, it wasn't a clever design or anything. It was just, a, you know, the play broke down post-snap. He didn't notice it and 
uh, threw it anyway. So definitely bad play by Goff. This one was probably the worst of the three interceptions, in my opinion. And then this one was also not great. It's, again, a on-paper pre-snap makes sense. Hit it, hit your halfback. The guy who's running out of the backfield, that's where you want to go with the football. That's the way this play is designed to work. It's actually Amon Ross St. Brown who's out of the backfield, but, you know, still, that's who you want to, you know, throw the football to. Well, Jared Goff takes the snap. He looks over, and Jalen Johnson, the defensive back for the Bears, reads this play. And is, I mean, just being smart, really, he's saying, wait a second, I'm in Ross St. Brown out of the backfield. That's not just a halfback, right? Let me pay extra attention to that. He runs in. He really could have had a pick six right there. And, you know, the Lions don't win this game if Goff throws a pick six there and everything else holds the same. Maybe that changes the whole game. Maybe that wakes up the Lions and they start coming back earlier. Who knows? But that was definitely a break by Jared Goff. However, as I said, the Lions did come back and win this game. Amazingly, despite all of this, they came back and won this game. Going over here, you know, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, we're a little bit into the drive at this point, but they had about four minutes and 15 seconds left to start a drive down 12 points. I mean, they basically had to be perfect, and they were going to need a chunk play. They were able to kind of dink and dunk, dunk their way to this point, but you felt like they were going to need at least a chunk play to make this happen, and it's a, you know, quarters coverage play for the Chicago Bears, and you have, you know, two receivers running different uh, depths down the field, but much further down the field, kind of similar to the concept I had been talking about earlier, uh, but just a lot further down the field. And as you see, when Goff takes the snap, this time it is working. This time they cover underneath instead of covering further deep. The safety doesn't get there in time, and now you have a window to make this throw. As you see, Goff puts that one right on the money. They do get a touchdown on that play. Great stuff there by Jared Goff, but also, you know, well-ran route, well-called play, all of that good stuff, and they were able to get the touchdown that allowed them to get back into this game. Uh, the Bears had a drive where, you know, they had a third down opportunity, uh, weren't able to make it happen, and then that would set up the game-winning drive. Going over here now, listen, I would love to, you know, talk about, uh, oh my god, it was this specific play. That's what won them the the game and all that stuff. That wasn't really what happened. It was a lot of stuff like, kind of like this, where it's quarters coverage the Bears are in. Jared Goff takes a snap, and I am showing one of the better plays from Goff where they did this, where you see guys open underneath, and that's a lot of what they were doing. They were still running the ball. They still ran the ball effectively uh, in this spot. They threw underneath, threw to the open guy, took what the offense gave them. This one a bit tougher, though, as there is pressure for Jared Goff, so he's going to be under pressure as he's trying to make this throw. But as you see, Jared Goff flips it uh, to Montgomery, who does a great job of being able to pick up as many yards as possible. And because of that, they are able to make stuff happen. So, I mean, really good stuff there from Jared Goff to make something like that happen. But also, I mean, you know, the Bears defense really didn't play great in that uh, down the stretch there as well, uh, leaving guys wide open and kind of the Lions offense was able to do what we thought they would do all game. So, yeah, as a whole, uh, not the best day from Goff. No one's going to deny that. But you know what? It's always better when you have a bad day and a win than a bad day uh, and a loss. So being able to, you know, make something happen uh, was very good. You just hope this is a one-off game, which it probably is from Goff. But, yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always... Thanks for watching.